good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, we have a real exciting show for you this evening. We're going to have a preview of what's going to take place later in, well, actually June 14th. But before that, I wanted to remind you about the ARP campaign, the AARP. It's their 50th anniversary this year, but they want to remind you that divided we fail. We have to stay together and make sure that we elect people who will look after our interests, who will look at, make sure we have health care for all, and look at things that really affect us. So we, make, we have to make sure we vote, we, and we say the native voice. We want to hear your voice, and that's at the polls. So please support our the uh, Divided We Fail campaign, and we will if we don't unite. So now I'd like to introduce and it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce Amory Sayers and she is a chairwoman of Indian Canyon. You're Ohlone and we are on Ohlone territory. Welcome Anne-Marie. Thank you. <clears throat> and we have an event coming up in, on June 14th up at Indian Canyon and would you like to introduce the guests we have here with us today? Yes, but before I do <clears throat> I would really like to have my daughter Canyon Sayers Roods truly honor the ancestral spirits on whose land we are on right at this very moment. That would be beautiful. And, so, and you have a beautiful daughter. And this, Welcome, Canyon. This is the uh, a grandmother's song, Canyon. Hi. I also go by Hahashkani, which in Shumash, that is Coyote Woman. But this is a Shumash song. I am Kosnon Ohlone in Shumash. And it's for the grandmothers. It's for the essence of the grandmothers. Moi moi ukawa. And is this some of the, what we will be hearing? Oh, oh we have some amazing uh, storytellers, singers. Uh, they're all, all native. We have <clears throat> Tony Serta, who's a tribal chairperson of the Rumpsian Coastal Ohlone people that does his healing dance at the very end. Mm -hmm. And uh, Patrick O'Rosco and the Pajaro Valley mm -hmm. Ohlone and Shumash too that will um, start opening it up with song and dance oh, how beautiful. and some amazing and, and we're going to get a preview then yes okay uh, it, it's 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 exciting and <clears throat> the storytelling actually starts at one and it goes from one until around five which we do have a break but there will be food available and then um there's an indigenous gathering for everyone who is there and it's very special it, it, it is. Really it's, is. Yes. I really have enjoyed it. When I'm, mm -hmm. I've met some beautiful people um, that have become very dear friends mm -hmm. uh, at, it, at uh, the storytelling. So, and who do you bring with you today? I have some very our tribal administrator, Dr. Ismana Carney. She uh, has been with Indian Canyon for um, fifteen years, perhaps. Around eighteen. Around eighteen. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, an Ohlone descendant, uh, John Carney, who happens to be her husband, so he keeps her in line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> try, try still. Probably the other yeah. way around. <laughs> yeah. and, and then an amazing Apache storyteller and singer, which I believe, uh, Ben, you will be perhaps sharing a song? Uh, a song or a story? What is it? A song? What story? Would you? Story. 
We'll bring oh, him back and have him sing a song <laughs> at another time. Excellent. So we'll have a story this time and a song next time, or both next time. Yes. Pardon me? Would, would you like to? Um, sure. Ben, I, I never pronounced your last name correctly. Benavides. Benavides. Ben Benavides. There are members of my family who don't pronounce it correctly either. Oh, so. thank you. <laughs> well, actually, when the first time I saw him, I thought he was Steven Seagal, and I was oh, going to ask him man. for an autograph. But... Isn't he a handsome man? <laughs> yes, I went all day he is. without hearing that today. <laughs> well, I know he's an so. actor. He has a lot of. Uh, a lot of talents, so that's why we do want to bring you back. I know you were in a play recently, and you've been in movies, and you've done so much, so there, we want to hear a lot of that. But so at Indian Canyon on the 14th, that's open to the public for a donation, and they can learn more about what that donation is by going on the website. But what else? We'll have music, storytelling. Um, tell us a little bit about where people are from, who will be there. Quite a number of storytellers. We're very fortunate to have uh, Dr. Daryl Babe Wilson, Yay. and he's <laughs> such an amazing, truly incredible, yes, he is. incredible gentleman. And he's living in Hollister now. I that know I'm, he is. I'm quite pleased with. He was up uh, this weekend. We, we've opened up my great grandfather's trust allotment to all Indigenous people whom are in need of traditional lands for ceremony. So there's a lot of ceremony that takes place there. And this weekend, there was th two medicine people, uh, Kenny Farmer being one, and he puts people up on the hill, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. he was sharing lessons. And then um, the, the, it, the canyon is full. There's a lot of ceremony going on, and all the life that surrounds that entire canyon comes alive, is alive. Now, how will someone find it? It's way out there. We do. We will have a map on okay. IndianCanyon.org, mm -hmm. so there'll be no difficulty there. And <clears throat> they can call before, mm -hmm. uh, which is in Hollister. It's eight three one six three seven four two three eight, and uh, get directions that way. But also there will be um, signs all the way oh, to okay, the canyon, good. so there'll be no difficulty in locating. Okay, good. So if we get there nice and early. We'll just have to find our way out of there <laughs> if we ever leave, <laughs> when you push us out. So Ben's going to tell us a story. Yes. Well, <clears throat> our, one of our origin stories um, states that way back when, after the Creator had created the Earth, He had populated it with animals and birds and beings that roamed the Earth. And there was also beings that were up in the skies, and the cloud beings, the thunder beings, the wind beings. And on the earth, his animals would populate and fly around. And there were also monsters on the earth back then. And the monsters were big, and they were vicious, and they were mean and cruel. So what they would do is they would gather the animals, and they'd eat them, destroy them. And they'd grab, or grab some of the, the land walkers and eat them and destroy them. So the Creator decided that the earth should be destroyed and start over again. So he consulted with all the beings, the thunder beings, the lightning beings, the wind beings, the sun, the moon, and consulted with them and said, I'm going to destroy the earth because it's become too cruel and my creations don't last. Thunder being said, there's one woman, she's a girl, she's a good person. You should save her and protect her. So the Creator went to the, the young woman and asked her to gather a little bit of every creation on the earth. So she grabbed little samples of each, gathered them up gathered them up, and the Creator told him to put them in the shell. So she put them in the shell, all these samples of what was good on the earth. And when she had gathered all that she could, he told her to get in the shell with them to save them, and he was going to flood the earth and destroy everything on, upon it. And the rest of the story will have to be told 
on the storytelling days. Oh, you're going <laughs> to keep us in suspense? Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> oh, dear. So, well. I'm getting all excited. I'm sweating here to death. Just <laughs> well, now I'm all... <laughs> How long do we have to wait? <laughs> Another month, oh dear. Another month. Well, I'll be waiting for that story. <laughs> the ending. <laughs> well, that was great. So we have, uh, we have about two or three storytellers that will be there. How many are coming? Yes, <clears throat> actually, Ismana uh, really did an amazing job in bringing a lot of the storytellers together. It's uh, the Rumsian Ohlone people and the Pajaro Valley Ohlone people in Indian Canyon Nation that collectively oh, okay. every year have really made this happen with the beginning and with the end and I'm kind of weaving in, in and out in between and is Mona Carney perhaps you can share as her tribal administrator she does earn her title because she's a facet of every every part and perhaps you can share uh, some of the, our storytellers that we're having yeah um, as Emory said we're we're going to start the event um, with Patrick Orozco, uh, Amakatura dancers, and um, they have maybe 15 to 12 dancers in their circle. Um, they, they do just this beautiful opening with dancing and singing, storytelling. Um, everyone dresses in their traditional regalia, um, so you really have that beautiful setting of being in the canyon, which is, th as we know who've been to the canyon, it's a really sacred place. Um, and uh, so we really open the event in that traditional way where in a sense you sort of get transported because here are these you know uh, wonderful traditional people with such pride and beauty um, you know coming in and, and opening up in these traditional ways um, and then we have a, a young storyteller who's actually now nationally renowned storyteller his name is um, Ramon Shiloh and um, he is uh, Cherokee Creek um, and also African American. And Ramon uh, focuses his storytelling very much toward the youth um, and uh, certainly dealing with, with issues in and out around youth and race. Um, and um, Ramon has a, a very strong, a strong sense of carrying um, you know, all the traditions that run through him. So, um, so he's going to really talk about his experience of how to be a young person carrying uh, numbers of ancestral mm. lines um, and having to struggle, went through a struggle of who do I identify myself with and now has really come to a place of wholeness where he's able to with pride identify himself both with his father's heritage and his mother's heritage. His mother is June Legrand who's a very, very mm. um, important native person in, in the local community and who of course had an incredibly deep tie to the canyon. So Ramon is coming down from Seattle and then we have a Lakota um, a storyteller and actually spiritual leader as well uh, whose name is Cam Lau Nightchase. And Cam grew up on the uh, Pine Ridge Reservation. His family is a, a very prominent traditional family, a Lakota family in South Dakota. So he'll be coming to share his, um, his experiences. And once again, what's beautiful as with Ben is the storytellers this year will also be, there will also be singers. Um, and dancers and um, so we're going to have that beautiful meld like that beautiful song that Canyon started with where we're going to have the music and the storytelling as one um, and then we have a, a Lakota woman elder her name is um, uh, Judy Kessler she grew up on, on Pine Ridge as well and um, she'll be sharing stories with us and then Theron Wayhill who's um, Bull Blood Shumash uh, um, storyteller who's fabulous he's um, He's a scholar. He's a PhD. Um, he's I've a heard him before. He's yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. So he's a young man that you know not only went through sort of the traditional educational route, mainstream route, but he also knows his culture indigenously. Um, so that and he's he, a PhD. And he's a mm -hmm. PhD, and and so he carries both those worlds. And he's a, I think, a wonderful role model and example mm -hmm. for young Native people um, that you can actually walk in both worlds with ease. Um, and actually um, a kind of inform and bring to both worlds the best of both, uh, which I think is very beautiful. And he has a fantastic voice. And um, he does. He's a really handsome, handsome young man, too. Mm. So, uh, um, so it's, it's just great to, to, um, to have those generations. So we have our elders, and we have the young people telling stories. 
um, and um, and of course. Now, does everything go on at the same time? I mean, is someone over here telling stories and someone singing, or is it one thing after the other? How does it? Look no, it, it's pretty much staged, and we have um, er everyone collectively views and enjoys the story that's being told. Oh, okay, good. We, we did have it staggering. But you miss things and you can't uh, hear everybody and be every place uh, <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. So it, it, it works out well. Oh, that's great. And we, we also have um, another storyteller, too. Um, let me look at my list. Uh, I mentioned all of them. We have all of them. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Bay. <clears throat> it was because uh, Daryl Bay Wilson, who's been a storyteller, from the first year that we ever started having storytelling in Indian Canyon, Theron said, if he can get his PhD, I can too. See. And it's, it's mm -hmm. catching on. It's really quite, quite and lovely. Canyon's going to get her PhD. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> and it'll continue on more and more. Um, actually, Anne-Marie was right. We're, we're hoping that um, a fabulous Australian Aboriginal elder may join us, Min Mai. Um, and we can't promise that to everybody, but we're hoping very much that she'll make her way over from Australia. So that would be beautiful. Um, well, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, as so I am do I. Every year, that it, but it seems like it's growing and growing every year. Now, what's going on at Indian Canyon? I hear you have a totem pole there. And tell, oh. tell us a little bit about what's what it's like there. What it is? It's a healing pole that was delivered the day before uh, last year's storytelling. And it's a, between 800 to 1,000 year old a yellow, Alaskan yellow cedar, and it's 34 feet long. It's four feet in diameter. And <clears throat> a gentleman who, uh, and his son, Tanu Shane Eagleton, carved it in a, in a double mm. helix. It's the DNA of all life. And it's just extraordinarily <clears throat> powerful. What was very interesting was that um, Tanu is, his mother is Fijian from the Fiji Island, and his father is English. And his mother, they went to his mother's island, and he, they were not accepted. Mm. And so they went to England, and they were not accepted. There, his family did not accept her as far as interracial marriage. And so they ended up in New Zealand, whereas he <clears throat> Tony learned how to carve beautifully there with the Maori people. Now that he's world renowned, his mother's village has asked him to come back to their village to teach their children. And the elders will teach him the language and the ceremony to rise the healing pole when it Mm -hmm. We're in that position. So everything goes full circle mm -hmm. beautifully. What <clears throat> we have a gentleman here whom I love dearly, and that is John Carney. He has just recently realized and done his genealogy that he too is an Ohlone descendant, which is very common among many people that mm -hmm. do come to the canyon in their realization of their native connection. And he is, um, part, has participated in ceremonies for many, many years and is an absolutely amazing gentleman. And John, oh, perhaps you. you can share some of your experience with the canyon and with the storytelling. Well, of course, the, uh, the canyon has always been a very special place um, for, for myself. Uh, personally, I've been able to participate in ceremony healings, been able to participate in many storytellings. Uh, the storytellings are special. Uh, I always tell friends, new friends that are, are just experiencing storytelling and becoming introduced to the canyon for the first time that uh, there's, there's always a story for everybody. Uh, I don't know how that works, but it's just sort of the, the magical nature of stories. And you get this wonderful opportunity by, you know, attending storytelling to, to listen to all these stories from all over Turtle Island that um, you can somehow associate with. There's, some, th there's always something in it that you can relate to. I've, uh, I especially enjoy the, uh, the coyote stories and how coyote always gets himself in trouble and you know, sets himself up for one thing and then you know, goes off in the other direction, gets himself in a lot of trouble, creates mischief. 
Uh, I've always enjoyed that. I don't, I don't know why, but it just resonated with me. Uh, but what, but what I, I told many, many people was that you know, you'll, if you listen to these stories, you, you'll, you'll receive a lesson. You just won't be entertained, but there, there's something for you. And it's kind of the, the nature of stories, which I've always enjoyed. That's true. Uh, Dr. Wilson talks about Coyote a lot, and yes. he actually followed us to the set here one time. <laughs> coyote. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he followed all of us home, and he bothered us for about a week. <laughs> so we kind of chased yeah. him away, and we'll see if he stays away for a while now. Rose, I must share with you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Canyon's um, native name is Hahushkini, which means coyote, and she has her own definition of coyote. Can you tell us your definition, Canyon? Well, Hahashkini and Shumash, it does mean Coyote Woman, but also in getting the name Coyote Woman, uh, I actually got it from Daryl Babe Wilson. Mm -hmm. It was because of a play, but I've acquired the definition of Coyote being a trickster, but at the same time in and out of two worlds, the real and the spiritual. But it's also, he also, well, she, both, they teach what's wrong and what's right, how to do things and how not to do things, by example, but also they're very, very wise. They are survivors, but they're also kind of trickster and wily and kind of cute, and then at the same time a little vicious. And so I got that name being the terror of the canyon, <laughs> Indian Canyon. So many people, well, I was a youngster, they, they were always upset with me. I'd steal things, I'd punch, <laughs> I'd run up in the woods, so. I was a little terror of the canyon and coyote fit me and sometimes I get a little kind of not like trash talk but kind of just a negative derogatory term because coyote is such that little wily trickster sometimes people just try to shy away from it mm. whatsoever so but that's coyote I take that name for <laughs> myself <laughs> well I would give it given well that's a good story and, and I know uh, Dr. Wilson talks a lot about coyote he's always telling us stories and and uh, then I say, well, Coyote ran in front of the car. He goes, let's see, did you cross his path or did the Coyote cross your path? I'm trying to figure <laughs> out all of the uh, Let's see, Coyote went first and I went. He goes, you crossed his path, you're mm. in trouble. I'm, oh no. Mm. <laughs> so I'm looking around, making sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping nothing happens. <laughs> okay, so June 14th, that is Saturday? Saturday at one. Okay, Saturday at one, we can start showing up. We'll probably head off early to get there in time. And so should we be bring chairs? Are there chairs there? It's right there on the screen, all the info. So mm -hmm. jot that down, you viewers at home. Make sure you attend, see us there, and we don't want to miss it. But should we bring chairs or? Well? You, you're welcome to bring chairs. We, there will be chairs and benches available, but okay. bringing chairs would be absolutely outstanding too. Uh, Always bring uh, a jacket in, in case okay, it does get good. cold, but uh, be comfortable. Uh, ben, we're going to listen to your end of the story from the beginning. From the beginning there. Yeah. Are you going to sing for us there, Ben? Oh, yeah. yeah. What about dancing? Uh, I'm going to let everybody else dance. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but so I'll sing as much as possible. Okay, but you'll be telling us stories. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm looking yeah. forward to the ending <laughs> of the story. <laughs> I think too that um, you know, sp especially people in the local area, we know how sort of shifty the weather is, um, and so for people to really come kind of prepared for an incredibly hot day, or a really chilly day, um, and that in the evening, uh, once the storytelling's done, we really do sort of carry on and sort of shift it. The mood shifts and. People are much more, um, you know, sort of sitting and relaxing, but we go all the way into the night, mm -hmm. um, late into the night around the fire with dancing and, and singing on that level. So people should, you know, bring blankets, they, could, they should bring sunblock, they should bring hats. A so really a, vari huh? a variety of things to really be prepared. Blankets to sit on the floor. Yeah. And comfortable shoes. Exactly. And what about flashlights? Should we bring flashlights, flashlights for definitely. the evening? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, Ken, you want to tell us something? Tell us. <laughs> I think she's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she's so there will be food and yes. beverages there. Yes. That's oh, I yeah, just want to make sure because people are always curious. They're welcome to bring their own lunches, but it will be Santa Cruz Taqueria, Taqueria Santa Cruz. serving food. And I just and, wanted to make sure. And are you going to be selling um, 
Cokes and water? Yes, I'm it, selling Cokes, water, minor snacks for the kids, as well as my own beadwork, so to make sure everyone has fun. What Excellent. about cameras? Can people bring cameras? They're welcome to bring, bring cameras. Okay. We just asked during the blessing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Or if there are any uh, after the storytelling is completed, if there's any um, ceremony that goes on with all, everyone that's there, preferably not. Uh, but it'll be dark sure. anyway. But uh, during the day after the blessing, can, people are welcome to. Um, but what is really good is sometimes if you'll ask the storyteller mm -hmm. if they mind, or I will ask, and, and if they don't mind, which normally they don't. Now, will any of the storytellers have books there? For sale because I know that you know Dar Darryl they're published, has so will they have them there books. to autograph and you know um, so. let let me ask Daryl if, if that would be great. I, one book a surviving in two worlds is uh, out of print mm. wow. you know and so let me ask if the, if he will that would be wonderful if not we'll just have him autograph pictures or something. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for coming today. I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope our audience shows up. Be there at 1 o'clock. Hear the end of the story, because I'm sure there's a great ending to this story. <laughs> but, you know, come prepared to have a great time. Tell your friends, and we'll gather a lot of people there and enjoy ourselves. Rose, you've been spectacular, and you are a very beautiful lady. Well, thank you so much. I will tell you, yes. Thank you, all of you, and we'll look for that PhD. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, and we'll see you next week. Good night. I shall in the Children's eyes, indigenous way, indigenous way. I'm in the hearts of my children's eyes.